So I mentioned to you offline that I'm uh, finishing up on the uh, rise and fall of the Third Reich. I'm not sure if you have anything in your exploration interesting to say, but the use of religion by dictators or the lack of the use of religion by dictators, whether we're talking about Stalin, which is mostly a secular, I apologize if I'm historically incorrect on this, but I believe it's a secular and Hitler, I think there's some d controversy about how, how much religion played a role in his own personal life and in general, in terms of influencing the using it to manipulate the public, uh, but definitely the church played a role. Um, do you have a sense of the use of religion by governments to control the populations, by dictators, for example? Or is that outside of your uh, little explorations as a religious scholar? It's not outside of my framework, absolutely not. Um, I think that it's done routinely. Um, propaganda is done routinely, um, especially there's nothing more powerful than religion to get people to act, I think. Um, I have my mother's Jewish and my father is was Roman Catholic, okay, from Irish extraction. <laughs> and so both um, members, uh, both, both great grandparents came here under duress because they were being, um, what would you call it? Uh, there was an act of genocide on both sides <laughs> being done by other cultures. Okay. So on the one hand, obviously we know about the Holocaust. Okay. So they came, the great grandparents came here to avoid that and they made it. Um, on the other hand, uh, there was an English um, genocide, we just have to say it, of the Irish. Um, it was called a famine, but it wasn't one. It was a staged thing. And so um, millions of Irish left Ireland on coffin ships, is what they called them, because they usually wouldn't get here. Mine happened to get here. Okay. So those that's the context that I'm coming from. So in each case, for one thing, the Irish weren't considered, you know, uh, there was Catholics weren't considered, they were considered to be terrible. And there was a lot of anti-Catholic rhetoric here in the United States, uh, which is kind of strange because one of the, in fact, the most wealthy colonial family were the Carrolls in Maryland and they were Catholic. Mm. So when you look at the United States, at our history, and you see the separation of church and state, do you want to know where that came from? That came from those guys. They convinced George Washington and Thomas Jefferson I mean, they couldn't vote, yet they had the they had they have their names on the Constitution. Is that not a strange contradiction? <laughs> so here, here you can see how you know propaganda works. There was anti-Catholic propaganda. There was anti-Jewish propaganda, um, and all of and a lot of it was that you know these people weren't human. They weren't human beings. Um, another thing I'd like to say is that when the Irish did come here. Um, they were indentured, a lot of times indentured servants. Um, but that's a that's terminology. Inde what is an indentured servant? Slave. Pretty much. So in that sense, religion can be used... Uh, derogatorily. As, yeah, <laughs> yeah, derogatorily <laughs> as a useful grouping mechanism of saying this is the other. And, uh, you know, it's powerful too because behind it is a force of... Um, you know, what people contend to be sacred, a sacred force, right? Yeah. So, you know, it's up to God to, you know, decide who's, you know, so you have to go along with what God says, of course. Well, that's basically, um, that's not the contact event. You know, the contact event is, is usually some type of very specific, legitimate event that a person has with something that is non-human or considered divine. Um, but when, when religions become um, narrativized, I would call it, by different institutions, that's when you're in danger of getting propaganda.